National wants military-style camps and ankle bracelets to crack down on rising youth crime, but are they the answer? Labor Minister Michael Wood and National MP Erica Stanford are with us this morning to debate on our Friday, Friday panel. Good morning, Morena. Morning, Ryan. Morena, right. Morena, everyone. Uh, Eric, I want to start with you. Is this three pages long? Have I got that right? Uh, the policy? And you haven't spoken to the Defence Force and you haven't spoken to any of the other partners. It, have I got that right? Well, Mark Mitchell, who wrote this policy, of course, was the Minister of Defence, you'll remember, and, and has actually spoken to the Defence Force about this in the past. He's also involved with the LSV scheme uh, in quite a close way, so he knows how these things operate. He's spoken with them in the past. And look, in an ideal world, we'd get policy advice from government departments, but unfortunately that doesn't happen these days. But I'm confident that Mark, in, the, in, the, in his role as Defence Minister, uh, has done quite a bit of work in this on the past and knows a lot about this area. All right, Erica, I asked you about the ankle bracelets a couple of weeks ago. This is what you said. Take a listen. Because mm. I didn't understand it, that 11, 12, 13 year olds could have an ankle bracelet um, put on them at the moment, but would you support the police doing more of that to try and keep a track of these young people? I and the National Party are not wanting to see 11 year olds with ankle bracelets. I mean, it's just a, it just breaks my heart mm. that, that we're actually even talking about yeah. this. And yet here we are talking about it. In fact, you've written it down. Well, you have to remember when we were talking about this policy, we were actually discussing ACT's policy, which was, hey, uh, let's whack an ankle bracelet on every 11-year-old that has, does their first crime. If you take a look at our policy, which I'm really proud of, actually, it's a suite of things. It talks about monitoring to make sure that we're keeping young offenders safe and the public <coughs> safe. But actually, it talks about them being repetitive, serious ringleaders. We're not talking about ACT's policy anymore, where we're just going to whack an ankle bracelet on, on anybody. Uh, but actually, to give kids brown boundaries to keep them safe, we have to be able to monitor them in some circumstances. We're not talking about every 11 year old, but the right. very serious offenders and repetitive offenders is what we're talking right, about Michael. here. But remember, there's a suite of things as well. Yeah, and we've, we've spoken about that this morning at some length. Michael, can you, two, mm. two issues, first of all, the ankle bracelets on the young people, and then secondly, the boot camps. Good idea, bad idea? This is all cheap populist politics that won't work. We heard from uh, Ash, the dairy owner, before, who feels like it's just playing for votes in the Hamilton East by-election. He had Aaron on before, an experienced youth worker, who said that this stuff doesn't work. Uh, Sir Peter Gluckman, John Key's chief science advisor, says that these things actually increase recidivism and don't make the community safer. And if we want to talk about getting advice from defence, when they reviewed uh, these military-style programmes under the John Key government, uh, a retired major general said that these programmes don't work. They're likely to lead to re-offending. You just get fit, fitter and stronger criminals at the end of them. This is the worst kind of politics. It's not based on any evidence at all. It's just about trying to get some votes by f uh, sounding tough on crime. We know there's an issue here. We've got to get down uh, to the grassroots level with these kids and their families. We do need to intervene. We do need to work with agencies and community groups. We have that work underway. It's not easy work, but that's where we've got to put the focus yeah. rather than this populist nonsense. The problem is, and the reason this, po this policy is going to be popular, as everybody keeps saying, is because you have done a lot of that, Michael. You are spending tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in these programs and for these programs, and yet the RAM rates are up 500%, Erica. Well, that's exactly right. And I just need to respond to Michael, because actually uh, what we did in this policy, and I know what Mark spent a lot of time doing, was taking a look at the, uh, the military-style boot camps, if that's what you want to call them, from what we used to do in the past, and taking the best parts of those and creating something completely different. We're very aware of what the downsides were of some of those, uh, and we've changed uh, what the approach. Uh, for a start, it's a, a much longer time frame. Secondly, to the, the uh, youth worker you had on earlier, he's exactly right. Part of the problem we had in the past was there was no wraparound and follow-up service after these young people uh, got out uh, of, of the, uh, the military-style academy that they were in. And so this policy deals to all of those things okay. that we didn't quite get right. Right. Uh, and has a, a, a so brand it's new revamped. focus. It's revamped. Will they, have it? Will they be training mm. with using weapons? Oh, of course not, uh, and we've been very clear about so that. They're on, a, they're about on a that military. Today. But what the, they're on what an army camp. They're on an army camp, but they won't be anywhere near weapons or training with weapons or anything like that. 
Absolutely not, but I can tell you what they will get. They will be getting structure in their lives to keep them safe and consequences to change their behaviour, but actually a whole lot of amazing people in the military who are incredible role models who will give them the skills and the boundaries and right. well, the structure given, in their given, lives that they have never had before. Given they haven't talked to the military about this policy, and as you said before, Ryan, it's, it's a mere three-page document. It's difficult to see that this has been carefully worked out. There's no evidence that sits in behind it. And just to be clear about this, we do have an ongoing issue in this area, but the hard work of police and community groups is beginning to see these ram raiding events decrease as we get to the offenders and we actually do things with them that are useful that will pull them back onto the straight and narrow instead of this kind of thing which has been proven to increase re-offending. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to talk about the clean car discount thing. I mean, I didn't even know where to start with this because it was very confusing when it happened on our show on Wednesday. Take a look at Christopher Luxon defending his record on climate change in opposition. We'd keep the clean car discounts right. and make sure that we've got low emission cars coming in. We would actually invest in an EV charging network and we'd also make sure we're actually helping lower income people access EVs, not, not rich people. Okay, all right. So, oh, so you would keep the clean car discount in. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> so the clean car discount is something that National obviously opposed and then Michael Wood, Labour Minister, Transport Minister, put out a press release about this interview. What compelled you to do that, Michael? Oh, because the National Party had previously opposed the clean car discount. It's an enormously successful scheme that's getting cleaner vehicles into New Zealand. I welcome the fact that we had this announcement from Christopher Luxon because it would be good if we can get consensus around how we reduce our emissions. Uh, regrettably, later that night, he was overruled by their transport spokesperson who said they don't support it, but they do support the clean car standard, which is something they've also previously opposed. Nicola Willis seemed to say the same thing, but it was pretty confusing overall. We want to make our progress and reduce emissions. If we can get National on board, that's great. But at this stage, no one's clear what they think. All right, Erica, can you clear this up for us? <laughs> do you support the clean car discount, well, the clean car <laughs> rebate, the clean car standard, or not? Uh, well, if this is Michael Wood's big gotcha moment, well, uh, I'm not that worried. Look, sometimes uh, we say the wrong word by accident, uh, and it's not the big gotcha moment that you think. Look, it was early in the morning. Uh, Christopher Luxon's not a perfect individual, and sometimes, and even I do, say the wrong thing. Uh, what he meant was, of course, the clean card discount is something that we don't and have never uh, 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 supported, because all it does is force those people who have no other choices, uh, like the ute owners and people uh, who can't afford uh, to invest in an electric vehicle uh, to subsidise people who can buy Teslas. And we know now from the evidence that actually that's exactly what's happening because the discounts that are going to people who are, who are buying Teslas uh, and buying Mercedes and buying BMWs uh, is huge. And if that's what Michael Wood wants with the policy, well, then well, that's up to him. I suppose, I mean, I don't know, I suppose public will be a bit forgiving for somebody misspeaking. Have, have, we've all misspoken at times, yeah. haven't we? Yeah, what, sure. Have you ever misspoken, Michael, ever yeah. said anything you didn't mean to? L look, look, of course, but it's not not just that, because in the, exactly the same interview, he also said they want to make it cheaper for people to get into EVs. Well, how do you do that if you don't have some kind of a discount scheme? He did then, as I say, come back, go and check, clarify, and said they support the clean car standard. I'm not sure if National actually understands how the clean car standard works, but it does actually work by putting incentives on the cleanest vehicles and disincentives on the, on the dirtiest vehicles from coming into New Zealand. Uh, so if that is the policy now, um, that's good to have that confirmed. But as I say, it was very confusing. This is about climate change. It's something that the National Party hardly ever talks about. They generally oppose everything we do in this well, area. If we do get support for yeah, these policies, so that's great. The interesting thing about climate change and, and your Two, your two parties positioning on it is that you both now agree, thank goodness, on net zero by 2050. You are both before the election going to outline exactly how you were going to get there and New Zealanders are going to say, I like that one better than that one and I'm going with, it, with those guys and that's what will happen. But right now we need to talk about Xi Jinping and the Prime Minister because they're having a very important meeting, a first since 2019 with the Chinese leader um, and there will be a lot to discuss, I imagine, hopefully no faux pas. Um, so what what, what do you think we need to say? What is the goal here, Erica? Oh, look, I think the important thing to note here uh, is that China are an important, we have an important relationship with China, not just a, a trading relationship, but a relationship with tourism as well and many other areas. Uh, and so it's important. Uh, and, and you'll see both sides of the House uh, generally take a view of this. That we, we tend to not get party political when it comes to uh, these sorts of things, when it comes to um, foreign relations, and we, we hold sort of a very similar line. And so you'll probably hear us saying much the same things uh, as what you will hear the Prime Minister saying. Uh, 
which is that that relationship is really important, that we, we have the ability to say exactly what we think behind closed doors, uh, and then again uh, in the public, and I think the mm -hmm. Prime Minister has said that she wouldn't say anything to him which she wouldn't say in public. Publicly. Uh, look, and, and we support those things, but that yeah. relationship is very, very important. It is indeed. Our biggest trading relationship, of course, you have to be careful what you say after what happened to Justin Trudeau. Did you see that, Michael? A little bit, bit of a pull aside there uh, that, 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 that got publicised, but the point Erica makes is, is right. We have taken a, an approach as a government uh, that we are straight up and consistent here. This is an important relationship, but where we've got issues of concern, we'll raise them publicly. We'll also raise them in the right way privately, whether that's to do with avoiding militarisation in the Pacific, whether it's seeking China's uh, support to try and rein in and stop Russia's horrific um, uh, aggression in Ukraine. Those are issues that we've publicly put on the agenda that the PM has signalled she will raise as well. Is somebody like Xi Jinping is having a go at you, you've just got to do, a, do the politician's smile. Can you give us the politician's smile just now, both of you? <laughs> we, we, we there it is. We, we do it every there Friday it at 10 past 7, <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> Thanks so much for being with us this morning, Labor Minister Michael Wood and National MP Erica Stanford. Ha, ha, ha.